What's going on everybody? I'm Johnny Brook. Welcome back to another Crafted Workshop video. In today's video, I'm gonna show you how to build this simple, modern DIY sofa. I built it using a single sheet of three quarter inch plywood and only used a circular saw, jigsaw, router, and drill. So really simple build, uh, very few tools required. I didn't use my table saw or any of my other fancy tools, even though I kind of wanted to, because I wanted to make this a much more accessible project for you guys. It only took me a little over a day to build. I had never done upholstery before, and I'm really, really happy with the way this all came out. This would be great for any place where you need seating, but don't have room for a full sofa. This is kind of, I guess, a love seat, really, but uh, it's super comfortable. The back is a little bit low. Uh, you could probably raise the back a little bit, but you might not be able to squeeze it out of a single sheet of three quarter inch plywood. So uh, obviously you can adjust that yourself if you want to. I do have plans available for this project on my website. I'll have a link in the video description below if you wanna check those out. And without further ado, let's go ahead and get started with the build. The first step in this build was to break down the three quarter inch sheet of plywood. To do this, I used a circular saw and the straight edge jig I built in a previous video. And if you'd like to check that out, I'll have a card and there'll also be a link in the video description. If you're gonna attempt this build using a circular saw, I'd definitely recommend building one of these guides as they make the process a whole lot easier. The first piece I cut was one of the sections for the sides of the sofa. And I'll have the exact dimensions of everything in the build plans, which are available on my website and I'll also have a link to them in the video description. After cutting the section using the circular saw, I started laying out the exact dimensions of the sides. Each side of the sofa is made up of two laminated pieces of three quarter inch plywood, and the first side piece served as a template for the three other side pieces. For this reason, I made sure to make my cuts as cleanly as possible on this first side. I used the circular saw to cut all the straight lines and then finished up the corners with my jigsaw. For the inside corner that connects the seat to the back, I rounded the corner slightly so that the flush trim bit I'll be using to create the other panels would fit into the corner. After cutting the side, I cleaned up the edges using some sandpaper, files, and a spoke shave. I especially focused on that inside corner, making sure it was smooth and nicely rounded. Next, I traced the outline of this side onto the remaining section of the first panel. Once the outline was drawn, I cut the next side piece out using the jigsaw. I made sure to leave about an eighth of an inch around the edges to allow for some extra room during the flush trimming. With the first piece from the sheet of plywood used up, I continued cutting sections from the full sheet the next section I cut included enough material for the four cross brace pieces which connect underneath the seat and behind the backrest. The next section I cut from the sheet was another section to get two more side pieces from. Once that section was cut, I traced an outline of two side pieces onto it and then rough cut them with the jigsaw, again leaving some extra room around the outline. With all four of my side pieces cut out, the next step was to create another matching side piece to serve as a template for the other side of the sofa. I stuck the original template side to one of the rough cut pieces using double sided tape, and then installed a flush trim bit on my router. This flush trim bit has a bearing that rides against the template and removes the extra material from the rough cut piece. This creates a perfect duplicate of the template side. After flush trimming the second side piece, I sanded the edges of the pieces just to clean them up a little bit, and then disconnected the two sides. Now that I had two identical templates, I could glue one of the rough side pieces to each of the template pieces to form the sides of the sofa. To do this, I applied an even layer of glue using a foam roller, and then attached the two side pieces. I used brad nails and screws to hold the pieces together while the glue dried, and also added a bunch of clamps. And I repeated this same process for the other side panel. After letting the glue dry, I flush trimmed both sides using the router and flush trim bit, and once both sides were trimmed flush, the sides were done. The next pieces I needed to cut from the sheet of plywood were the back and seat panels, and the exact measurement for these panels are in the plans, which again are available on my website. Before assembling the seat and back panels with the sides, I chamfered all the edges using a chamfer bit in the router. 
To attach the seat and back panels to the sides, I used powerhead screws from FastCap, and these screws have a ton of holding power, and I also think they look pretty good. I made sure to mark out an even spacing for the screws just for aesthetics, and then drilled countersunk holes and attached the panels to the sides using 2.5 inch screws. The countersink bit I'm using is also from VASCAP and is designed to work with these screws specifically, and I just love how clean they look once they're installed. I used four screws on each end of each panel and was amazed at the stability of the sofa even before adding the cross braces. And speaking of the cross braces, they were the next pieces I needed to cut. I ripped them to width using the circular saw and my straight edge jig, and then cut them to length using the circular saw and a speed square. If you have a miter saw, I definitely recommend using that here just for more accuracy. To attach the cross braces to the sofa, I used pocket holes. I drilled two pocket holes in the ends of the cross braces, and then added more pocket holes along one edge of the cross braces. While I'm drilling the rest of the pocket holes, let's talk about one of the sponsors of this week's project, Purebond Plywood. I really love using Purebond. It's a formaldehyde-free hardwood plywood that's made in the USA. It's actually made right down the road from me here in North Carolina, and it's just super high quality. Basically, anytime I'm using plywood on a project, especially for furniture, I'm using Purebond. It's available exclusively at Home Depot, and I'll have a link in the video description below if you'd like to learn more. Next, I chamfered the edges of the cross braces that will be facing away from the panels and then attached them to the sofa using inch and a quarter pocket screws. These cross braces add an incredible amount of strength and lateral stability to this sofa. With the wooden portion of the sofa assembled, I sanded all the surfaces up to 180 grit before applying finish. For the finish, I used a water-based polyurethane and decided to spray it on using my HVLP system. If you don't have access to an HVLP system, you could just as easily brush on the same finish, but the surface quality of a sprayed finish really is amazing. The next pieces that needed to be cut were the bottoms for the seat and back cushions, and these were cut from half inch plywood. Instead of one long cushion, I decided on two cushions for both the seat and back. I ripped the pieces to width using the circular saw jig, and then cross cut them to length using the circular saw in a square. To allow the fabric to flow over the edges of the plywood cleanly, I chamfered all the edges of the plywood pieces and also rounded the corners with the random orbit sander. The main padding material for the cushions is foam, which I got from foambymail.com. They've got a ton of options for foam, and I'll have the exact types linked in the video description in case you want to check them out. I went with 3 inch thick foam, and this was total overkill. I definitely recommend 2 inch foam for both the back and seat cushions. I used spray adhesive to attach the plywood to the foam, and then cut out the cushions using an electric knife. These are super cheap, can be found at most grocery stores, and cut through this kind of foam really easily. To make the cushions appear rounded, I cut a chamfer on the edges of the foam. To do this, I marked a line 4 inches in from the edges of the cushion, and then marked a line an inch and a half down from the edges of the cushion. Then I used the electric knife to follow these lines, keeping the knife at a diagonal. I repeated the same process on the seat cushions, and you might notice that the foam is a different color for the seat cushions, and that's because it's more dense to support the full weight of the person sitting on it, whereas the back cushions don't need to be as dense. To add a little more padding and also give the cushions a little better shape, I used some batting material between the foam and the final fabric. I added about 3 inches to each side of the cushion to allow the batting to wrap around, and then cut the batting using a rotary cutter and a straight edge. To attach the batting to the underside of the cushion, I used the Aero T50 DCD cordless stapler and some 5 16th inch T50 staples. I stapled the batting to the bottom of the cushion, starting in the center of each side and moving towards the outside, trying to keep even pressure along the edges. Once I got to the corners, I trimmed off any excess and then folded the batting at the corners and added a few more staples. While I'm adding the batting to another cushion, let's talk about the other sponsor of this week's video, Aero Fastener. Aero makes a wide variety of fastening tools including staple guns, nailers, glue guns, riveters, and more, and I have a ton of projects featuring Aero tools coming up. If you'd like to learn more about Aero Fastener, check out the link in the video description below. To finish the cushions, I needed to attach some upholstery fabric. This is attached in the same way as the batting, using staples on the underside of the cushion, and it's important to keep plenty of tension on the fabric to keep it from having any wrinkles. This was my first time doing upholstery and it really wasn't that difficult. 
I found a few good videos on YouTube showing the process and managed to create some good looking cushions if I do say so myself. I purchased the fabric at a local Joanne store for the whopping price of $8 and I used about a yard and a half of material for the four cushions. The corners were definitely the trickiest part of making these cushions, but once you figure out the right steps, it goes pretty quick. Before permanently attaching the cushions to the sofa, I added some rubber feet to the bottom of the sofa to help protect the floor. I also added my stamp and the date while I had the sofa upside down. To attach the cushions, I used four inch and a quarter power head screws per cushion, one in each corner. And these have plenty of holding power and are easily removable should the cushions ever need to be repaired or replaced. And once the cushions were attached, the sofa was done. All right, hopefully you guys enjoyed this one. This was a really simple build, only used four really basic tools that pretty much any woodworker should own and came out with a really cool modern sofa. So again, I do have plans available for this project on my website. I have a link in the video description below if you wanna check those out. Also, I have links to all the tools and materials I use down there as well, so check those out. If you don't already, go ahead and get subscribed to the channel. I put out new projects like this every week. Also click that little notification bell so you don't miss any of my future projects. And last, I wanna say a big shout out to all my patrons over on Patreon. You guys are amazing. I'll have a list of all my $10 and up patrons at the bottom of the screen. Thanks again for watching guys and until next time, happy building.